Your PC is bottlenecked. My PC is bottlenecked. Everyone's PC is bottlenecked, but we see bottleneck being thrown around like some kind of dirty word when we're talking about PC building and upgrading. Now, a PC has to be bottlenecked, otherwise you're gonna have infinite frame rates in your games, and we don't have that. So you're either held back by your GPU or your CPU, and which one it is can depend not just on the part selected, but the resolution and frame rates you're playing at. For example, in my system, my CPU is not really holding back my GPU at 4K, but if I'm playing over here on my 1440p ultrawide, or especially if I run it at, at 1440p non-ultrawide, I can get held back. And in this video, what we're going to look at is, if you're somebody like me who had a i5 from a few generations ago, I have an i5-9600K, and if you have an even older i5, this would definitely still apply to you, the bottleneck would be worse. What we're looking at is if you wanted to buy a newer GPU for 1440p gaming, can you actually support that? Because like I said, everybody's bottlenecked, but if you want to drop a like 6800 XT, which is a 1440p monster, at 1440p in many games this beats a 3080, and in some more AMD heavy titles, I think I've seen it beat a 3090. So 1440p, this thing's a beast. Can your older i5 support it? Can my older i5 support it? That's what we're gonna find out because that's the kind of bottleneck that you want to avoid. We don't want the bottleneck where you are paying a lot of money for a new GPU, but your CPU can't keep up because that's wasted money without upgrading the CPU as well. Let's jump into some games and I'll give you some conclusions at the end. All right, here we are in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. As we come out of the cave, let's see what happens. It's sure looking like we are CPU bottlenecked. Yeah, that appears to be the case. We see cores up in the upper 90s, even hitting 100% usage. Well, the GPU usage that you can see up there at the top is only in the 70% range at the moment. So we are definitely, absolutely CPU bottlenecked, at least in this area of the game, which is fairly CPU demanding due to the more open sort of nature here with the city and all the people. But yeah, this is a severe CPU bottleneck, although performance numbers are by no means bad. We could be doing much better and closer to my monitor's 144 hertz refresh rate if we uh yeah had a better cpu in this thing yeah look at it here pretty bad and just to confirm the graphics settings here for you all this is the game on its maximum highest preset and note that that does not include the ray traced shadows but everything else is just on the highest preset let's try some other games well here's the old duke in resident evil village and we are not getting our GPU usage to 100%. We're in the 80s here, and the CPU usage seems to be popping all over the place. It's, uh, on a lot of threads, not near 100%, but we keep seeing threads that cycle into the 90s. And I think that's what's going on here, is we keep getting threads that are up near uh, 100%, and it's just not constantly displaying that, but that's why we can't get the GPU usage any higher. This does definitely seem to me to be a GPU, uh, sorry, CPU bottlenecking the GPU. Although, I mean, look at our actual frame rate, you know, closing in on 200 frames per second here. So I wouldn't really be too worried about it. By the way, this is the maximum preset uh, without ray tracing. So we could definitely toss on some ray tracing here and handle that with some GPU usage to spare. But anyway, I think we can call it for Resident Evil Village that at least in this scene, we are CPU bottlenecked, although the overall performance would be maxing out 144 Hertz display. Okay, Cyberpunk is incredibly demanding on the GPU and doesn't seem to particularly like AMD architecture. Now I'm on the 6800 XT. But here we are at the ultra settings, and we're getting in the mid 70s frame rate. The GPU usage does seem to be pegging into the upper 90s, and our CPU usage doesn't seem to be having any threads that are capping us um, on our performance here. So what I'm actually interested in now is, let's say, even though our performance here is very good, but we wanted even better frame rates and we're willing to play at high instead of ultra, can the CPU keep up? So let's drop down to high and just see what happens. Okay, with high settings, it does look like the CPU is still keeping up. And this is a fairly CPU demanding scene I chose here because of the uh, kind of open world setting with all the cars and pedestrians. 
Although I'd say, oh, right here, oh, we definitely seem to hit a spike there where the GPU usage dropped. I think we hit a, a bit of a CPU bottleneck for just a second there. And we're definitely seeing some threads getting into the 90s now. So it's seeming like this is actually fairly balanced. The high settings seem to be about as far as this CPU can go. Let's test that theory by pushing down to the medium preset and seeing if the CPU can keep up. And, well, it, it is starting to drag the GPU a little bit, I think, into the, a little bit of the lower 90s. Although for the most part, it's keeping up. We had slightly higher CPU usage, like here we just dropped into the 80s there for just a second. Okay, so we're definitely running on that borderline here. If I try sprinting, let's see what happens. It, it's not doing too bad. So it looks like it can handle things over 100 frames per second here. Right there, you saw some dips of the GPU usage into the upper 80s there. So even down into the medium presets, it looks like it's doing a fairly good job. Um, but I would say here that we are slightly CPU bottlenecked at the medium preset. Let's test some other games. Okay, here we are in the Ascent in combat, and I chose this combat because I feel like these rockets that just hit there, you can see my frame rate stutters and tanks there. The lows drop extremely low just for a second, and then the frame rates pop right back up. I do feel like that particular rocket attack is kind of a CPU issue, mainly based on the fact that in one of their recent updates, they added in a, what is it called? CPU something or other, CPU performance mode. And if I kick that on, we're not gonna see the stutters on the 1% lows anywhere near as badly when those rockets hit. So watch once again as the Papa Feral hits with these rockets and my 1% lows don't drop anything like they were before. Again, the difference there is something that they call the CPU performance mode, so I feel like that that is a CPU limit, and I wish I had a better CPU to actually test it on to see what the entire difference would be. So overall, it looks like the majority of the game, you're not really CPU limited here at all, although on those particular effects, I guess it is, uh, maybe so. Okay, Forza Horizon 4 apparently doesn't like MSI Afterburner. So we're using some other tools to measure it, but we are absolutely CPU bottlenecked. Now the frame rate here is still gonna be past a 144 hertz monitor anyway, um, but we are definitely hitting maximum CPU usage and the GPU is only sitting around 70 and sometimes up into the 80% range never even reaching it into the 90s. So we can call it as a definite CPU bottleneck in Forza Horizon 4. Okay, the medium, getting some high frame rate and high GPU usage, low CPU usage. So it's not looking like, at least in this area of the game, we're even anywhere close to a CPU bottleneck. This room becomes more demanding, but it seems to again be mostly a GPU demand. CPU usage staying fairly low. Now, this game did recently get a update to include AMD's FSR, which could push our frame rates even higher. Let's try it out a little bit just to see if that gets us anywhere near a CPU bottleneck. To be honest, I don't think it will. And hey, look, I don't think it did. Our frame rates look great though. And one reason why I did this just now is to appease my subscribers who were wanting a 1440p FSR test and I did it at 4K. So there you go. And my thoughts on the image quality is that FSR ultra quality looks fantastic. Um, even at 1440p, although I do think at 1440p, it's slightly more noticeable than uh, it is at 4K, although so good, I think you could definitely, definitely use it. All right, we're in Doom Eternal. My health is low and I'm staring at performance metrics instead of trying to aim, so we'll see if I survive. However, it does look like we're at uh, pretty much maxing out the GPU. CPU usage does seem pretty high though as we get certain things happening in combat. Let's go ahead and do a little more and see what happens. Is that how I get the health back, the little flames? Ooh, we saw CPU usage spike there to about 
and GPU drop a bit. I think we might be seeing a few slight bottlenecks here um, during the combat. And I imagine there are even more intense scenes in the game as well. But overall, I mean, our frame rates are in the 200s, so I'm not too concerned about it. But I would say that we are getting a few little spikes here and there of CPU bottlenecking. For the most part, we do seem to be good. And I just about fell off the edge. Okay, yeah, I'd say performance is awesome. A few little spikes here and there. Not too worried about it. Do I remember how to fight one of these guys? I'm getting caught up in playing the game instead of, uh, like, actually doing my job. Let's switch to the next game. Okay, here we are in Red Dead Redemption 2 facing a serious CPU bottleneck. Notice the CPU, some of the cores hitting 100% and being up in the upper 90s, and the GPU usage way down in the 60s and 70s. Sometimes it does get a bit higher, and if I was out in the countryside with less going on, I think it'll be less CPU bottleneck, but we are absolutely CPU bottlenecked right now. The overall frame rate is pretty good. I'll also mention that my graphic settings are slightly tweaked from Ultra. This is more like the hardware unboxed optimized settings, but with the, some of the settings turned back up a little bit. So this is close to Ultra, but a few tweaks to get a much higher frame rate. Although it looks like here at 1440p, we might as well uh, just run everything at Ultra since the CPU is getting bottlenecked. Well, I think the gameplay speaks for itself. In many games, the i5-9600K, and by extension, similar or lesser CPUs, will absolutely bottleneck my RX 6800 XT, and by extension, similar GPUs, like a 3080, and definitely better ones, like a 3090 or a 6900 XT. So, does this mean that you should avoid buying a newer GPU if you're on an i5-9600K. Well, I think that's a little bit complicated. We could definitely see that we were reaching very good frame rates, but if the CPU's holding back your GPU, do you really want to be paying for a GPU performance that you're not able to use? However, we also saw that there were absolutely games that could take advantage and be taxing enough on the GPU that the 9600K is not holding it back. So this might be a little complicated and depend on which games you're playing and if those ones would hold you back, but in general, I'd say that it might be best to get a whole new build if you're, especially if you're on something worse than the i5-9600K, and again you're playing at 1440p. If you're playing at ultra-wide 1440p, I might do a separate video testing this, I might not, um, but that's a little more taxing on the GPU, so you're gonna hit fewer bottlenecks, and then if you're definitely playing at 4K, I can say that I hardly ever run into any CPU-related issues. Occasionally I'll hit a little stutter where my mins drop below what the GPU could handle, but overall in the games that I play, uh, it has hasn't really been holding me back at 4K. But I would definitely say that with the system requirements for newer games coming out, a lot of times recommending 8 core, 8 thread, and newer CPUs, uh, it, and the, you know, the newer generation of consoles having better CPUs than the older ones did, and right, a lot of games are programmed to support the older consoles. Once things are starting to be programmed with just the newer generation of consoles in mind and not backwards compatibility the older ones, we're, I think, going to start seeing higher minimum CPU requirements than we've been used to. I know that I'm going to be looking for a CPU upgrade soon, although be, given that I'm playing at 4K, I'm not going to be immediately needing to upgrade right now, I might wait for the next generation of either AMD or Intel chips to come out uh, to give myself a little breathing room on having uh, some CPU upgrade paths for a generation or two rather than buying into the tail end of the current ones that are out right now. All right, I'm rambling on quite a bit, so let me know what you guys think about all of this in the comments section, and I hope that you have an excellent day.